welcome back to Kirshner Farmstead. My name is Kirsty, and tonight we are going to be talking about freeze drying. So we have the medium harvest right freeze dryer and um, we like to look for uh, when our garden isn't in full swing. We like to look for really good deals on produce and we actually found these bell peppers at our local grocery outlet for only 50 cents each which I don't know where you guys are, but here in Northern California, that is a great deal. We haven't even seen like green bell peppers under 69 cents in years. So um, we actually found they had the same deal on yellow bell peppers a couple weeks back. And now I got a whole case of the red ones and we are going to be freeze drying them. So freeze drying is a process um, that uses sublimation. And what it, so what it does is it freezes the product down really cold and then as it is heating the product back up, the water turns into a gas and it's sucked out of the chamber with a vacuum. So um, the most of the nutrients, almost all of the nutrients actually is retained in the product, unlike if you were to dehydrate. Dehydrating your food is still great. It's just, it does take about 40% of the nutrients out because of, um, because of the heat process that it goes through. So, uh, we are really excited to have our freeze dryer. We've had it for about four months now and we've done all sorts of stuff and we're just going to um, go through the whole process. So let's go. We're going to get these chopped up and then we are going to actually pre-freeze them in our uh, deep freezer before we put them into the freeze dryer because it just gives it a little jump start and you don't have to wait as long for the, um, the whole freeze drying process to go if you pre-freeze. All right, let's get going. Alright you guys, so it has been overnight and it's actually about lunchtime right now and we are finally getting our freeze dryer on and started. We're out in the freeze dryer room and um, we are going to start the freeze dryer. We have to wait 15 minutes for it to cool down and then we can put um, the peppers in there. So the screen's going to turn on. We have a fan in here because it's... Uh, the freeze dryer runs really hot, so we have to have ventilation in the room or it gets too hot and it actually can't function right. All right, so we're gonna hit just the start button, close the door, and we're gonna wait 15 minutes. All right, we'll be back. All right, you guys, we are back and we are loading our peppers into our freeze dryer. Okay, so we're going to close it. Yeah, that's nice. I just dropped my moisture meter into the bucket of water. Okay, so we are going to close the freeze dryer, make sure that it's locked down. We are going to make sure that the drain valve is closed and then we are going to hit continue. Notice it says um, that we waited the 15 minutes, it's down to 28 degrees and now it is freezing and it's going to be like this probably for the next uh, 28 hours, probably. That's about how long the yellow ones took. So anyways, all right, we'll be back, guys. Okay, you guys, we are back. As you can see, 46 hours and 19 minutes later. Okay, <laughs> this is one of those days. There's not enough coffee in the world, I tell you. But anyways, uh, we it hit extra dry time last night, but it was really late, so we just put on an extra 12 hours to come to this morning. So now we are out here and we are going to uh, bring the peppers. They are nice and dry. We're gonna bring them inside and I will show you different ways that we can package them. All right, you guys. So we are back inside and we are going to be packaging up our red peppers. I tell you, today is just one of those days. I'm surprised that I even managed to get time to film this. <laughs> but, so, we have a few different options on how we are going to be packaging. Um, when we use these freeze-dried goods in the kitchen on a regular basis, we put them in half-gallon mason jars. 
So you want to be pretty quick about um, you want to be pretty quick about packaging these up because they start to absorb moisture as soon as you take them out of the freeze dryer. And we have actually a really high humidity today because we've been we've had like a snow thunderstorms over the past two days. So um, so the first, when you're going to be using them on a regular basis and you want to be opening the jar often or you know regularly you're not going to use an oxygen absorber um, oxygen absorbers are going to suck all of the oxygen it leaves the nitrogen but all of the oxygen out of the air so um if you open it up and close it it's just it's going to stop working it doesn't continue to work what we're going to use is a moisture absorber and uh they work great i have found for when we are doing stuff that is in the kitchen like i was saying when when we have stuff that we're using regularly um we just use a moisture absorber and that is these i will link um these we got everything but our harvest right stuff here on amazon so i'm going to link the oxygen absorbers and the moisture absorbers uh for you at the bottom so that you can look at take a look at them so I'm just going to fill up one of these half gallon mason jars and then I'm going to take one of these and you don't have to be as fast about like opening up these and sealing them um, like you do. Actually that was the last one in the bag. Uh, like you would have to for the mylar and the oxygen absorbers and we'll get to that in just a second. And you can get mylar through Harvest Right, which is the freeze dryer brand, or you can get it on, um, or you can get it on Amazon. Okay, so these Mylar bag. I really like this size of Mylar bag because I don't want to be filling like a huge. I think these are half gallons. Um, I'll double check that, but uh, I like this size because then I can open it up and put it into one of the half gallon jars. It fits a little bit less than the half gallon jars do. I can open it up and have it in the right amount because if not, then um, then you open a huge bag and you're wasting an oxygen absorber every time you're opening something that has one in it. And you have to either put a new one in there or just use it quickly. Uh, the freeze dried stuff, it doesn't go, it does, it goes bad so fast. Um, all right, so there's that. Now they make stands that you can buy to put your bags into the stands so that they are, um, so that they don't fall over, which would be a good investment, I think, for us because we're always just propping them up before we seal them. And I'm going to show you two different ways to seal Mylar bags. So freeze, if you're curious about what the texture of freeze dried food is, it's really crisp. And it's all like I call it when we did chicken soup. I was like, it's like chicken soup styrofoam. And it is. It's some stuff is super good to eat, just plain freeze dried. Uh, banana chips are my favorite. Um, but the when you reconstitute it, it's going to be similar to um, it's going to be similar to frozen texture. So if you like something frozen, like for say, if you like frozen corn. Freeze dried corn reconstituted is going to be similar to frozen corn. Let's talk about oxygen absorbers for a second. What you're going to want to do is you're going to want to buy and make sure that you're buying um, ones that come in small packages in like packs of 10. Because if it comes in a full pack of 50, you're going to have to break that down. So that means exposing them to oxygen, right? And you want to do that as little as possible. So um, we like to buy them in either 100 or 200 bags. And then, but they have, they come in these little bags of 10. So then when you are going to, you only want them to be open for 15 minutes or less. And my whole pack, I take and seal immediately. And then the ones that are in the bags that I'm sealing, um, I try to do as fast as possible. I'm going to show you two different ways to seal them. So it's going to take a second longer than it normally would, but that's okay. I, so I need three, right? So I'm going to cut this open and look, Justin actually already opened this package. It had 10 in it. And I think he said there's six left in there. 
and the it's still pink because of how fast he resealed it. So and if you can see, he double sealed, which is what I'm going to be doing too. Um, I think I might cut it on this end so that I have more room to seal. And uh, yeah, so let's get to that. I'm going to be using my impact sealer to reseal it back up. So one, two, three. We are going to seal this immediately after opening it once and then twice. Okay, so now we got a double seal on there. I could have done them a little closer together so that when we cut them again, cut it again, we'll have, um, we would have more room, but that's probably going to be the last time that uh, we use that one. Okay, so the other option for oxygen absorbers, just really quick, is going to be a mason jar. So you can take and once you open these, you can take and either take them out, fill a mason jar with rice, and put them into the mason jar of rice and then seal it, and that will seal them. That, that'll keep them fresh. And then the other option is to just take it and fold it inside of the bag and stick it in there. I'll do that sometimes just for double assurance. I don't have a lid right now, but you can go like that and then you'll have them in there too. Okay, so for sealing these, you have two different options. The first option is going to be a hair straightener. Pretty much every woman in America has one, right? <laughs> okay, so um, they're super easy to use and easy to come by. You just want to set it to the highest setting and then you're going to do about a half an inch at the top of the bag. I, I would say make sure that you squeeze as much of the air out as you can. With freeze dried goods, it's kind of hard to get it squeezed out because um, it's so crispy in there, right? And you don't want to crunch up the peppers. So just get as much as you can out of there. And then that is sealed. It works great. I use this method for almost all of my grain storage because it's big bags. Um, but for the freeze dried stuff, I do like to use my impulse sealer that came with the Harvest Right machine um, because so, it, oh, the other thing is if you fill the bags fuller, it's easier to use the hair straightener because it's standing upright. With the impulse sealer, you have to get it like, you have to get it so that it doesn't spill out when you're sealing with it, right? So again, we're going to double seal with the impulse sealer because it's not quite as wide as the straightener. That. Sometimes the bags don't like to seal right up along the top. They'll like um, flare out right at the top edge. It doesn't mean it's not sealed. It's just right along the top. All right, so there's that. And then there are these. I do love the Harvest Right bags. Um, not only are they obviously pretty, but um, they also are about seven mil thick and they are really good bags. They last for a long time. You have to watch out when you are ordering on Amazon. Sometimes you'll see, always make sure that you check your, um, make sure that you check the reviews because sometimes they will say that a bag is seven mil and it means that each side is only three and a half. So they're like adding the entire width. Well, that's not a good Mylar bag because if you put something pokey inside of it, like let's say you were storing like pasta, right? And the pasta is a really hard um, item, obviously. So you have like a rotini and you stick it in there and you try to press the air out of it. It can easily poke a hole through a 3.5 mil bag easily. So try to make sure to get five mil or higher for long-term storage because that is going to be keep your food the freshest. Now, when you are start storing in Mylar, obviously if you have a glass jar, nothing's gonna eat through this, right? If you're storing in Mylar, you need to make sure that you're either putting your Mylar bags into like plastic totes or plastic buckets. Yes, it is possible for rats and um, vermin, mice, rats, whatever, to get into a plastic bucket but it's going to be a lot harder than a Mylar bag. And if you just like throw these in your, you know, your st food storage, especially if it's not in your house, um, then it's a recipe for disaster and rodents will find it. And that would be the worst thing to go and open all this hard work that, you know, your years of hard work and find that rats have nested inside of your stuff. 
Um, so just make sure that you do that. So we do love our Harvest Right freeze dryer. Um, we, if you would like a link, I can put it in the description below so that you guys can go check them out. They have three different sizes and we got the medium. So it is, we probably could have gone with a large for our family size, but uh, the, the large does take a separate 220 line. Um, so we went with the medium because it take it's just a regular one ten plug. And um, yeah, so I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. It was quite uh, the long process of filming over 49 hours, but um, I hope that you enjoyed it. If you did, please like and subscribe and give us a thumbs up and uh, feel free to tell us what else you would like to see freeze dried because we are constantly running that thing to get different stuff stored. So I hope that you have a great rest of your day and your week and have, and we'll talk to you later. Bye.